Coming up on ECG, they did what with Stan Lee's blood? My hero movie. We test Opu's comic book knowledge. <laughs> Spyro's reignition trailer. All this and more coming up on the East Coast Geek Podcast. <laughs> Welcome to episode 128 of the East Coast Geek Podcast for Friday, April 6, 2018, where we bring you all the latest news on comics, movies, and gaming. I'm your host, Jeremy, and with me always is Opu. How you doing, buddy? Hey, hey! Feeling the hot seat yet? Oh, perpetually. For those that don't know, uh, he didn't know that that was coming, and uh, I just kind of came up with it last night because I was going through stuff, and I was like, let's do this because I've wanted to do it for a while. But uh, before we get into that, uh, I hit a bunch of Far Cry this week, and uh, I'm at, I think, two-thirds of the bosses. Well, no, half of the bosses are down, not counting the last, or counting the last boss. So, uh, so much fun so far still. I am having a blast with that game. Uh, glad I got it. You know, the usual. But I can't wait for some Sea of Thieves. It's been a while. Yeah, I was about to say it's kind of been a while for you for playing, and I think they've uh, they've patched some more stuff in. Supposedly, what my wife was saying, but I think it's just because she went to areas that she hadn't been to yet, but were already in the game, so she's freaking out about it. I heard, I heard that rumors are that the next big thing will be uh, more more of the stuff that the community has given feedback on. And I think one of them is is being able to reserve a space for a, a, a friend on a bigger crew. Yeah, that would be the most important thing is um, the uh, – my two biggest criticisms with Sea of Thieves was the pirate creation and the logging in, like trying to get your crew together. Yeah. Because – well, you should be able to start it up and then grab your crew in progress. It shouldn't have to right. be where you're in a lobby waiting and then all of a sudden, okay, now we got everybody, now let's go. I should yeah. be able to be sailing and then say, hey, come on, jump in. That that should have been something that they had the forethought for, but I guess maybe there were some time limitations, even though we know they probably uh, kind of chilled out on the uh, development towards the end anyways, once they went gold. But yeah. uh, between that, they're changing some of the... Or they changed the spawn mechanics, so you're not going to constantly get freaking spawn killed by people. And the option to scuttle your ship while you're dead. That yeah, you're that's... not just jumping back into trouble. Yeah, no, I can see that. I mean, we never really get in that much trouble to begin with. I think we've been pretty lucky. One, we've either been able to get away from the people or we've been able to take them down. Right, right. And really, the spawn mechanic is broken in general because... I, the, I do feel like there needs to be some kind of punishment for you for dying. Um, well, they because did. like if you well you know they're going to do the casting, but like say you're in a battle, right, and you're spawning just back on your ship within like thirty seconds, and you just basically you just it's a war of attrition because the skeletons don't respawn after a while on certain things, or you might hit a sweet point. At the at the point where the crew that you're fighting is in a spawn timeout, so you may just, so it doesn't feel like it's a while it is still kind of a who's better at this game, it still feels like I don't I don't, I don't know how to word it. It feels like uh, you know it's just you know whoever whoever spawns faster really not necessarily right know. right yeah no, no no I got I'm you just, uh, I don't, yeah I got you yeah um I guess. It, We'll see. I mean, I'm sure you guys are quite a bit further ahead of me, but uh, and I need to play with a few people that are in the process of getting the game or have gotten the game and just haven't gotten around to playing with them. And that's the hard thing, too, is it's only a crew of four, and it's, like, impossible mm -hmm. to get in the same lobby. Otherwise, we'd run with two ships around, I'm sure. Oh, uh, yeah. No yeah, issue. absolutely. Just split the treasure. But uh, we'd have to figure out how to do that. Um, well, that's one good thing I kind of like, that it's not like skill based as in like you don't level up with more powers and stuff yeah is that if you get somebody like you know jeremy can't play with us 
every weekend and I can't play with my wife every day. Um, you know, she's got more gold than me, but her skills haven't necessarily increased as in like, okay, well, she's level 15 now and I'm still level two and I can't handle the monster she's finding. Kind of like, wow, and everything else. So I kind right. of I kind of do appreciate that, that she can be doing stuff like, you know, a few hours every day. She goes and makes a few hundred gold for us so we can go buy the cool stuff. Nice. That's just skins or whatever. But So I guess she's you know, in charge of the party now, huh? <laughs> uh, she's probably higher rank, so we'll ha- have her put down the the, the bounties, bounties and the yeah. missions. But That'll that will just be more gold for us, right? Right, so, yeah. exactly. Uh, all right, uh, let's go ahead. Do you have anything else you want to spill before um, we do this? I got Hulu again, and I've been spamming, spam watching uh, Mighty Magic Swords. I watch all that. Man, I love that show. I love that show. That's one of the best cartoons they put out. Man. <laughs> in recent years also um watching gravity falls again on there love that show still and watch the sonic boom again nice love that show i uh i uh i was listening to uh, another show and they were talking about uh well they did it like a which is a really neat idea and it's something to consider is like a uh pilot episode review of a, a show mm-hmm. uh yeah. and not current shows like past shows but this past yeah. uh, past time they did it, uh, they did because the, bef- the time before they had a couple of weeks ago they had done Lost, but this mm-hmm. this past week or a couple of weeks after that they uh, did uh, Breaking Bad. So I am now towards the end of the second season. <laughs> How many seasons were Breaking Bad? Six. It's it's technically five. They broke the fifth season into two. Mm. Um, but man, I I still like that show. It's a lot of fun. <clears throat> but anyways, all right, let's let's do this because uh, this is gonna. I think I got some easy ones in here. Oh god! And I've got some uh, pretty difficult ones mixed in in the mix to uh, try and see if you know what you're talking about. <laughs> Otherwise, I get fired. <laughs> yes, this well, is this been is a while. This so. is the the post employment interview. All right, uh, who are Nightcrawler's parents? Um, Mystique and. Uh... The red demon guy. It's not Azrael. Is it Azrael? No. It's it starts it starts with an A though. Yeah, it does. Mystiquean. You're close. And he, oh, fuck, what, was it, what was his name? He was in X Men First Class for whatever reason, even though he's not a mutant. But the reason he was having he had Nightcrawler <laughs> was because he was trying to get kids. He was trying to have children to be able to anchor himself into this dimension. But in order to do that, he already had to be in this dimension to have the kids. Right. So it was a really stupid plot. But what was his name? It was it was it started with an A, didn't it? Do you even? I figured you'd get this one. It does I start told, with an A. It's, it's an A Z name. But it's not Azrael. Like, and it's, it's not. <laughs> it's not Azrael, like you said. It's. Come on, this is making for I, some great podcasting. Yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um. You talk. I, mean, I, can des- I can describe the guy. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, well, 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 I said he was red and pale boy, so it's yeah. really he's big and muscular. He kind of looks, in a way, he kind of looks like uh, Trigon <laughs> without the multiple eyes. Great. I'm, I have a blanket on this. It's Az something. Yeah. Nothing. Azrael. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, Mystique and Azazel. Azazel. Yeah. All right. Uh, oh. <laughs> All right, let, dun, let's dun, let's dun, do this because I pulled this from from a, a page that I will use again, so I won't give you the source. But uh, uh-huh. they had they had a bunch of them, so and like tons of pages of them to go through. So I was kind of picking and choosing the ones that I could actually make questions out of and things that I might uh-huh. or that I think you might know. Yeah. Uh, okay, so how did Arkham Asylum get its name? Uh, from uh, Doctor Arkham that created it. Okay. Oh, are you talking about the like? Are you talking about in, yeah, I'm in talking the about the inspiration. Or, inspiration. For oh, her. from H.P. Lovecraft. Yep. From uh, yeah. The Arkham Sanatorium in or Sanitarium in Arkham, Massachusetts, the made-up yeah. place of H.P. Lovecraft. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. This one's an interesting one. I thought this was this is kind of cute. In the Ultimate Universe, what is mm-hmm. the police code for metahuman battle? Uh. Was it 1611? Am I close? You're close. 
You want, me to tell, you want me to tell you it? Because you already guessed. Was it, was it fourteen eleven? No, it is. It is. Or sixteen fourteen? Uh, no, it is six one six. Six one six. That's the Marvels. That's the main yeah. Marvel. Uh, I was thinking they were going to use the. I think the Ultimate Universe is sixteen eleven. They use. So six, that's why. Yeah, they use six one six as a nod to the main. The main universe. Mainstream universe. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, uh, <sighs> Captain America. Uh, mm -hmm. This is gonna this is gonna be kind of tough, I think. Uh, uh -huh. All right, in Captain America comics, who gave Cap his iconic shield style that he still uses today? Cap, we're Brian looking for one? we're the well, the the round shield. The round shield. So, because originally he had the bad shape shield, like in which was referenced in the movie. Okay, uh, and. Yeah. The round one with, that's not vibranium in the comics. Who, it's a mixture. Who who gave it to him? Gave, I'm looking for the character. Who gave it to him? Oh, the character. Who presented it to him? I guess is the better the better uh, the better question. Maybe mm -hmm. that'll maybe that'll push you in the right direction because this is a specific person that actually presented it to him, which I thought was actually kind of neat. Uh, was it a president? I don't know. Was it? I don't know. Was it? Uh, was it? <laughs> when did he get it? He got it. He was given it. I will he give got, you this. He got it before he was frozen. He was given it in issue number two, by the way. It was uh, so, that quick of a change. Uh, and yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and give me your answer. And so I'll what? President you. Roosevelt? There you go. FDR gave yeah. him his shield. Because uh, here's the thing. I was like. Did he get it before or after he got frozen? But then I remember when he was laying there, he had a shield on his chest when the <laughs> ice was melt from him and the wasp right. was flying around him. Oh, okay. I, I remember that panel. And she was like, she was like, uh, she, what the hell was she even saying? She was saying that it looks like he was moving or he's breathing or something, I believe. All right. Now, got a bonus question. Why did uh -oh. they change his shield? Why did they change his shield? Um... Because the other shield was copyrighted. Is that your answer? It's not. It, it's not. It's close. That's close. It's it's close answer. But there's a there's a reason. Was, uh, there's a reason why thought, they changed it. Was it because it looked like one of the bureau one of the uh, federal bureau's uh, symbols? Mm -hmm. um, why did they change it? It resembled. Since this is a bonus, I won't keep you yeah. stringing along too long. Okay. Um, because uh, they changed it because the shield itself, the mm -hmm. way it was laid out in its design, actually resembled very closely the shield, which was from another mm -hmm. comic book series or a comic book publisher. I'm pretty sure. Is the right? shield that old of a character? Uh, let's see. I didn't think he was that old of a character. Uh, because there was a there was a recent comic that Archie or somebody was publishing called The Shield, and there was a lawsuit about about it, I believe, or they had some kind of cease and desist. But then they came to an agreement to, oh, that he could still use the shield as long as he didn't throw it like Captain America. All right. Uh, well, but see, this is the thing. Uh, first appearance in Higgins Pep Comics number one, January of nineteen forty. Okay. So he's been around for a while, but his his torso his torso looks exactly like mm -hmm. that sheet that heater shield style. All right. Uh, where's the tab? There we go. All right. Where Pet comics? In what? In what media did Superman's kryptonite first appear? Radio show because the voice actor was going on vacation. That is awesome because that was the uh, that was going to be the fun fact. It was introduced as a plot device to incapacitate the hero and allow other characters to take the lead. It also allowed Bud Collier, Superman's voice actor, to take vacation time. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Uh, uh, the uh, the other fun fact that I pulled out of there is the idea came from an unpublished Superman story by Jerry Siegel himself. The K metal it was called from K metal. Yeah. The K metal from and Krypton. So here's the funny thing about that is that <laughs> uh, during World War II they were going to publish some really stupid story where um, Lex Luthor had made this radioactive bomb that could demolish a city. 
and Superman was going to stop him. And they got investigated by the government because they thought that the Manhattan Project had leaked. <laughs> and the, the, the awesome. comic book writers were like, no, we were just coming up with a stupid story. <laughs> it's like that, that actually happened a couple of times back then. Wow. All right, uh, this is this is interesting, uh, and you'll have to tell me which uh, which series this is from. But uh, mm-hmm. where did Jim Shooter get the idea for Spider Man's black costume? Where did Jim Shooter get the idea for Spider Man's black costume? I don't know that one. I'll be, I'll admit it. Um, like, I don't know that off the top of my head. It is. I a, honestly don't. He got the idea from a reader named Randy Schuler, who he paid two hundred and twenty dollars for the idea oh, wow. to use it. So uh, if you can... got an idea, write it in. Maybe they'll pay for it. <laughs> they used to give out. Marvel used to give out the No Award, where you got like a empty envelope. Oh, really? Yeah, the, or the nothing. It was like the Nothing Award or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> Great. or the No Prize, the No Prize Award. I think that might be what it was called. Great. So um, I can tell you when the black the black suit came about the, during the Secret Wars, but uh, that's, I, that was, knows that. that was all I was looking for, and yeah, that was huh. bonus. All right, who was the first flying superhero in comics? Who was the first flying superhero in comics? That wasn't Superman because he was only able to leap. Leap tall buildings in a single bound. In a single bound. And um, uh, they it was... actually brought that for the a- animations. Yeah. Because it was cheaper to animate him flying than it was to constantly leap everywhere. <laughs> um, and those animations cost about 90000 a piece <laughs> at their time, I believe. Jeez. So it's I know also, all that. It's also, well, you ahead. also who know it's, who else it's not. It's, it's also not Captain Marvel. That was the other hint. Oh, oh, uh, it wasn't Captain Marvel. Um, <laughs> and it wasn't Batman. No, he hey, kind of glides. <laughs> hey, he, he has he had a whip, remember? Oh yeah, that's um, right. And, uh, or the the grappling hook, or whatever you want to call it, on um, the bat. Um, okay, so the first flying superhero. <laughs> hmm. I know this is a pretty broad question because you know there's so many heroes out there that fly right uh yeah <laughs> uh, wonder woman or the specter neither damn namor who namor, namor was with the... his wings namor that's right was he, the first he was one. the uh, first he is the first mutant of marvel comics yes he is that is correct all right uh how about this one's a, this one's a this one's a low ball this one's coming right across the plate you ready Okay. Where was Harley Quinn first introduced to the Batman universe? Batman the animated series. That is correct. That and is Harley correct. Quinzel. And then she was yep. brought into the comics afterwards. Hey, I'll give you one. Oh no. Um <laughs> what what character was introduced from what was it? X-Men Evolution into no, the comics. I have no idea. Um well, well she first I will say this she first appeared at a an X Men animated show, and then she made her way into comics. X twenty three. Oh, really? Yeah, I believe so. Hey, you know what this means, right? I have two questions yeah. on the second page that I I deem very hard. That okay. I'm going to go ahead and give them to you when we get to them. Oh God! All right, uh, I still got more. So, uh, <laughs> what originally triggered Bruce Banner to f- transform into the Hulk? Nighttime. Nighttime, sundown, that is correct. Because the Hulk wasn't originally a rage beast. He was more of, it was more of a Jekyll and Hyde persona. And so he was actually really, well, relatively smart, but like gruff and kind of a brute, like a thug. Right. He was, it was the personality that Bruce was ashamed of. Right, right. And that one eventually evolved into Joe Fixit personality, the Grey Hulk we know. Because he was originally Grey. How are you on your artist's? Not very good. Great. But let's try it. What is the name of the artist known for both the art of the band Gorillas and the art of Tank Girl? Mm, I do not know Tank I Girl. Loved, um, I love Tank Girl and the fact that when like they did the, the movie. the movie. When they, well, especially the fact that when they did the movie, they actually threw in comic panels here and there. That was really You neat. know why, right? Why? Because they forgot to film it. 
Are you serious? They forgot those. They forgot to film those scenes. I believe. Oh no, that's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> so they had to draw them out. I thought it was. Um, I thought it was just neat that they were doing that, but whatever. Okay. Uh no, I can't. I I um, I can't tell you to be honest with you. The guy's name is Jamie Hewlett. I wouldn't know but, that one. Okay, that's fine. This, yep, this will help me sorry. guide me into the other directions that I need to do okay. when I go do this again. <laughs> All right, uh, from where does Kane Marco, a.k.a. the Juggernaut... juggernaut the Juggernaut? The, jugg- <laughs> the Juggernaut. I just made a new He episode. juggles really well. He's a monster, people. <laughs> where does the Juggernaut derive his power? The... Okay, now I cannot pronounce this. Okay? So I apologize <laughs> for it. But it's the... Uh, and technically, he doesn't derive it just from this. No. But, but-, but he uses... He has a gem... The gym of Sidorak, or however you pronounce it, it's like C Y O T T A R A K or some crap like that. It's a mute inning, but the god, the, the god Sidorak, or however you pronounce it, uh, is is the one that uh, pow- gives him the power. So Juggernaut's power fluctuates based on if he's being evil or not, because whenever he actually tries to be a good person, the god depowers him. Right, because he's not fulfilling his end of the deal. Right, he can also be forcibly depowered if it gets ripped from him, like Onslaught did. All right, so it is. Yes, it is Crimson. Yeah, the Crimson Gem of Sidorak. Yeah. Uh, and this- here's another retcon for that. <laughs> it was originally meant, or the God originally intended for Charles Xavier to get it, supposedly, because he saw the darkness in Charles Xavier. Oh yeah. Well, do you know yeah. you know their relation, correct? Well, they're stepbrothers. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that was also in there, but I figured that was too common knowledge to throw in there anyways. But mm-hmm. there are some people that are listening that don't know. All right. Uh, this one's kind of a derivative of comics, all right? Mm-hmm. William Moulton Marston created Wonder Woman, but he mm-hmm. was also the invent- or inventor of a famous scientific instrument. What was it? Uh, the lie detector. The systolic uh, blood pressure test, the precursor to the mod- modern polygraph. That is correct. Otherwise known as lie detector. Sorry. Which is really interesting because, you know, he has that awesome, uh, Wonder Woman has that awesome uh, lasso of truth. Yep. Squeeze the truth out of you. All right, so these hard ones, these ones will be uh, really, these, I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to ask for specifics, all right? Oh god! This is this is this is gonna this is gonna take you a little bit, I think. Uh, but I'll have to I'll have to mark the ones if you get them right. All right, uh-huh. uh, X Men's second team was composed of mutants from different nations. Can mm-hmm. you name the members of all the all new, all different X Men? And as a bonus, if you throw in their nations for which they were part of, as they were added to that team. Okay, so there was Wolverine for Canada. Colossus for Russia, Storm for Africa, Nightcrawler, f- Nightcrawler for Germany. Who else was on that team? Jeez, <laughs> um, who am I missing? Who am I missing? Who am I missing? Who am I missing? Uh, who else was on that team? Was Thunderbird on there? The Native American? Didn't he or? Didn't he die in, like, issue two of that from a plane crash? And he was... Um, Native he, American, right? Yep. Because there was another Thunderbird who was Indian American. <laughs> he, he he was called Thunderbird because he was crapping on everybody after all that curry. All right. Uh, <laughs> well, he did have, like, heat-based powers. Oh, well, really? <laughs> uh, some kind of energy, like plasma or something, I think. Or I, curry I powder. I don't... It was curry powder. <laughs> All right, uh, you have three more. Three more, great day. Um, who else? Well, you're missing a very I obvious mean? one. I oh, know I'm missing. A very you are missing one. a very obvious one, which is interesting because I would consider him to be like an A team. He'd be like like the you know the first team X Men, which is interesting that I, even Wolverine's part of that too. But. Uh, who are the three I'm missing? Let me know when you're tapping out. So, 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 are you saying that like who, who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? It's it's not the one like 
You're not saying any previously established X Men prior to that, are you? Yeah, I mean, you've included Wolverine in there. Was Wolverine no, first introduced? No, Wolverine was first introduced in Incredible Hulk 180, technically off screen or in the shadows. Okay. 181 was his like official debut when you saw him on the cover and stuff of the Incredible Hulk. He was fighting Wendigo in Incredible Hulk. Um, was Beast in there? Oh, what, what happened to my screens? But, uh, hold on. There you go. I guess because I haven't messed with things for so long. Um, jeez. Let me know when you give. Uh, you gotta, you gotta give at some point, or we'll be here. All I know day I gotta give at some guess. point. Um, yeah, I'll just stop reading chat. I'm not reading chat. Okay, don't oh. read chat. <laughs> oh, well. Okay, I'm gonna throw this out there, but Perry, you're not supposed to say that stuff. <laughs> Banshee. No, I can't believe I forgot. The responsibility's what? on you to not read chat. Uh, well, it's right here. How much? I didn't think anybody would be doing that. And yes, he's from Ireland. Um, you have two more. One very obvious, and one that you should probably know. But yeah, I just I can't think of them off the top of my head when right. I'm when I'm in a I'm in a stressed environment like this. You got. Go I should have told you. There's eight of them. You got six out of the eight. Oh, uh, Cyclops from America. Uh, what, what ain't the? I, I should have. The, here's the thing: is you, the, the giveaway should have been um, that you said, "Oh, well, they could have been previously established." I didn't even think to say Cyclops because it's too in your face. And yes, he is American. And Sunfire. Sunfire from Jap Japan. Yep, yeah. that is correct. I totally for now. See, I would have totally blanked on that one. <laughs> I, I, I should have got Cyclops. I don't blame myself for missing Sunfire. Um, I do blame you for missing Banshee. Yeah, I mean, he's one of my favorites. And I love his daughter, Siren. Oh, do you know the <laughs> villain that he's related to? No. Black Tom Casty, who is able to shoot energy, but he has to use a wooden medium. So he carries around a wooden cane with him, and that's how he shoots his energy. Until his powers mutate into like a tree person. Mm. Also, do you know who Black Tom Casty's best friend is? No. K Marker, the juggernaut. Really? Yep. Interesting. They're basically best friends. All right. They always team up together. This one this one's off the wall and it's uh mm -hmm. it's more or less speculative mm -hmm. and not really confirmed that this is actually the answer, but it's basically mm -hmm. the answer. Mm -hmm. In Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns, set in an alternate uh -huh. future, an old Oliver mm -hmm. Queen implies mm -hmm. that Superman cut off his arm years before for some reason. What was mm -hmm. that reason? What was that reason? <laughs> because he's a hippie. Because he's a hippie is incorrect. <laughs> um, I thought this was pretty interesting <laughs> that they that they that he drew this. Uh, drew Frank Miller drew this line from this other comic. Uh, you know, I don't know to be honest with you. Uh, the untold situation is somewhat recreated in Green Arrow 100, where Ollie's arm is stuck inside a bomb, and the only way for Superman to save him is to tear his arm off. <laughs> you may have all the other different ways Superman could have resolved that situation. He just ripped his arm off. He could have, like, laser cut it off and, you know, cleaned it up real nice, but, you know. I guess. Yeah, he could have he could have frozen and shattered the bomb or torn the metal apart. Right. I mean, he's Superman, he, he lifts a billion tons. Yeah, well. I, th I thought it would be <laughs> because the president would, had sicked him on him because he had basically become the, um, <laughs> the, the president's attack dog. Great. All right, uh, that's all I got for you. I hope uh, I hope that was fun. Uh, it seemed like you got what you you missed the first one. I got like fifty percent, right? Uh, I don't know. I, no, I didn't. I did this that one wrong. You got that one right. You got that one right. Uh, you didn't know this one. You you didn't know that one. Well, you did bad. I did bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, about fifty percent. We'll give you that. Yeah. So that's not bad. That's not bad at all. And plus the you know the the six out of eights, that's not too bad. Yeah. Three quarters of the answers right there. 
So I mean, I was put, I was kind of put on the spot too. Oh yeah, you were, and I now I now I can just say, hey, there's another quiz coming up, and you'll be expecting yeah. it. Uh, I I just thought it'd be neat because I was going through, and I was like, you know, which is always all about them obscure facts from comic books. Let's do this. And I hope I, I hope I gave some more obscure facts that you didn't know. Yeah, no, the additionals was great. Uh, definitely added so, to it. So it doesn't show that I'm blatantly ignorant, people. It's just some of the stuff I'm a little rusty on. So now that we're a half hour into the show, let's go ahead and hit the news. Um, this first one is pretty disturbing. And the surprise hopefully showed it. Uh, Stanley's blood was stolen and then used to sign Black Panther comics. This has to be the most bizarre comic story I've ever heard. It it, um, it really is. It's, it's really yeah. weird. Not to mention the it's, fact of everything that else that's going to come in here. Yeah, I mean it's just dark and horrendous. I mean you're still in an old man's blood to begin. I mean still anybody's blood is is awful. Still an old man who really needs his blood is really bad. Um, so as detailed in a new report from TMZ, Lee's missing blood has popped up on the market in a couple of Black Panther comic books that the Marvel co-creator himself signed in his own body juice. The comics in question were being sold, were being sold at the Avengers Station store on the Las Vegas trip. The twist is that each comic comes with a certificate that authenticates the book as a hand-stamped signature of Stan Lee using Stan Lee's solvent DNA ink. One comic in blue DNA ink was selling for two hundred fifty dollars. The other in gold ink was selling for five hundred. Which I've Avengers got Station, all the pictures there. Avengers <laughs> Station in Las Vegas is reportedly has reported that they have officially pulled the Black Panther books off the cell floor as of this last Monday. Um, after learning about their controversial connection to Lee uh, Sunday night. This all goes back to how the former business associate of Lee's was accused of stealing the blood after already stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars from the comic icon and also forging documents to obtain expensive real estate in his name, in Stanley's name. Holy crap. (laughs) It's it's admittedly unclear whether these Black Panther comics with Lee's DNA in the ink were officially sanctioned or part of the theft. What is clear is that the collectors now have a pretty macabre reason, macabre, macabre, reason, macabre reason. It's got Bray in there. You don't pronounce them. They're silent. No. Take the, French. Take I'm French. not speaking French. <laughs> You're using I'm a French word. I'm speaking the American. Then use a different word. No, that is the Spanish word. Is it Spanish? Because it's like maracas. You're a maraca. All right. Continue. For trying to get their hands on these issues. To be fair and honest, they're only going to go through value. Yes, they are. Um, Especially as so the years the pour on. Yep. <laughs> so, here's, so here's the thing. So let's see. He's been uh, accused of sexual harassment after his wife died. He had two nurses stealing that stuff. Right. Stealing money from him and everything. Now he's had a former business associate. He's had a bad last few years. Uh, not to mention the pneumonia scare, and there was another health scare in there for him. And he does want to go back onto the comic convention circuit, but people close to him are worried about that. Obviously, he's 98 now, I think, 97, 98. That's rough on regular people. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is awful. Like, if this was stolen blood, could you imagine? <laughs> you like it. How did they? How did they get it? Anyways, I mean, that's 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 pretty that's pretty dirty and underhanded. I mean, the poor guy's been through a lot lately, like we said, with the the thefts and all that crap. But well, now someone I mean, stole well, his blood. Had, yeah, well, if he had nurses there, and they were yeah. like, "Oh, well, we'll draw on your blood for testing or whatever." One of them I just, mean, one of them just happened to be a comic book collector. <laughs> well, no one one was like, "I'm going to use this blood for for evil, for whatever." For or, evil. or the business associate. Paid them to steal it. Yeah. You know? It's, it's, if really, if, it's really if, weird, man. Yeah. It's really it's, weird. <laughs> so I don't know if this is going to be investigated or not, but this is strange. I, um, you would have I to, you would think, if it's, if it, and it's certified as, you know, being his, his blood. blood yeah. <laughs> it's like, how do you get that certification? Unless, unless he was part of it. I mean, 
that that's the other thing but yeah i mean whatever see, and, and that's the thing they don't they don't know um really at this time so if anything more pops up then we will absolutely bring it up yeah this macabre story we'll bring it back up this this maracas story yes oh, all right let's uh let's hit the movies and tvs because apparently we have a, a couple of things that that opu's excited about <laughs> Thank you, Perry. Thank you. All right. Uh, really? My Hero Academia movie for August. Yes. Is that all we care about is My Hero Academia? I heard a third um, season drop. Didn't we talk about that last week? Yeah, so third season is dropping tomorrow. Yes. Speaking of which, Overlord Season 3 was announced this week. I did put it in the notes, but I did share it on the Facebook page. I'm so hyped for that. Um, this last season was great. If you haven't gotten an Overlord, you got to get into this stuff, man. Um, so, first, so My Hero Academia, show about superheroes, kids going to school to learn how to be superheroes. Great anime, highly recommend it. It's, uh, I'm telling you, a lot of it is just like a, a Japanese love letter to Western comics, especially the, when the main character is All Might. Um, the first trailer dropped this week, kind of last week. And it shows the, the most staggering thing about it is that this little teaser trailer shows a glimpse of a young All Might. Um, the All Might we've seen in the comics lately has is obviously an older, more experienced one, but also a weaker one. Um, look, at, look at the intensity in his eyes. Yes, like he does not look like this in in the normal <laughs> comics. With you seeing his eyes, it's usually shadowed over with like his eyes glowing. Um, while My Hero Academia has focused heavily on Al Mike, much of his past is a mystery to fans. The series informed audiences the man was once quirkless, which is without powers, um, but was chosen to receive one for all, the power that gives him his super strength, um, from his mentor, Nana Shimura, once he entered UA Academy. The time between then and his encounter with Izuku, the protagonist of My Hero Academia, and his successor... Um, has been kept in the dark. So with only bits and pieces known, like his injury, who caused the injury, that kind of stuff. Um, so, ham- so fans are hopeful that this debut film would give them a lesson in All Might's past. I'm absolutely hoping that it shows the battle where he gets this injury. Um, I wish we had pulled a picture for it, but he's got this massive injury. He mentions that he's like missing part of his lung and most of his digestive tract oh, from, a, from a very severe battle. Um, and... The, the other cool thing is, like, considering that all the fights we've seen All Might partake in, where he absolutely dominates op- opponents, it just initially it was just one or two blows. Um, I mean, he does stuff like he changes the weather patterns when he punches. Like, he does an uppercut. He, well, he, it's not an uppercut, but he punches at one point with so much force that he uh, blows away the rainstorm. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so he's a, extremely powerful. And, um, We've so seen is, so, is he the, so he's the star of the show, or what? So All Might is basically this universe's Superman. He is the poster boy. He's called the pillar of peace and justice, or the and the hero of it. Like the world rests on his shoulders, so to speak, to keep justice. While he's around, there's villains are almost non-existent besides petty crimes. Okay. Um, he he always shows up. With you, when you, with a smile on his face to let everybody know, hey, he's here. Take care of the problem. <laughs> um, he's considered the number one hero in the world. He, and no, he can't fly. He, he, well, he doesn't have heat vision. He doesn't have blah 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 blah. Um, he actually does leap everywhere. But the uh, quirk he has, one for all, is a power stacking, and I personally think a power multiplying ability. What it does is, say I have the quirk and I hand it off to Jeremy. Jeremy now has the strength of me and him. Multiplied, nice. so to speak. He is the eighth holder of the one for all quirk. So he has the power of everybody before him. Being a guy that, being a guy that plays video games all the times, so I was gonna say, is that, are the powers additive or multiplicative? And well, the th- <laughs> considering the strength, like I, I did, I, I you know I played around one day. I was bored. Like say, so arguably, every person, uh, you know, I, it doesn't exactly explain it. You know. 
the first person to hold the quirk, say he could lift 200 pounds. Okay. Just an easy number. He gave it to another person that could lift 200 pounds. Now, was that multiplied together or was that added? Because that's only 400 pounds, which is still impressive for like your average person, but it's still not considered super right, powers. Right. You know? So like, even if you did that, okay, well, 400 pounds plus, plus another 200 for the third holder, that's only 600. So it would it, I feel like it would have to multiply as opposed to just add, just stack on top of each other. Because you're doing again, you're doing things like you're parting the heavens, you're shattering <laughs> buildings. You know, two hundred times eight eight is not impressive. That if now if like okay, well you got that four hundred pounds times another two hundred times another two hundred times another two hundred, then you're getting into big boy numbers. Great. You know. Great. Um I mean we've like at the end of the first season, he has to fight this monster specifically designed to defeat him at 100% of his power. He can regenerate. He's got super straight, strong. He's stronger than All Might. He can uh, regenerate. And most importantly, he has shock, shock absorption powers. As in, the blows hit him and it just, he, he absorbs energy. All Might has to go above his 100% power and knocks him across the country, basically. It's a really impressive fight, amazingly well animated. So if this is him at his weakest, what would he be at in his prime? When, again, I kind of got off on a little tangent there, but he's he's just a, he's re- a really amazing character. Just his absolute optimism and boundless energy. And the and I'm not going to give away all the twists, but like the, uh, you know, his All Might persona and his civilian persona right. are really are basically the same, but it's kind of complicated. He, he gets a little more pessimistic in his civilian side about like the people that he can't save and he can't always be there for, and the realization that he is getting weaker. Oh, okay. You know, okay. Um, that he he you know he used to be able to be all might all the time, and now he can only do it three hours a day. So that's only that's three hours of the day that he can save people's lives. 21 hours for the rest of the day. People are dying and getting slaughtered. Cats are stuck in trees, you know. And, and even with his powers, he, he can't, yeah. <laughs> and it just, and it gets it gets worse and worse as the series goes on. He goes, okay, now I can only stay all my one hour a day. What can I do in one hour? Not to mention, he's got students that he has to protect. He's got a protege to train and how to use this power. Plus, because Izuku's now the ninth holder of all for one, or one for all. His power is going to technically be greater than All Might's. So he's got to train this other kid at the same time. So it's you, – you really you – really I'll have to check uh, it out, I guess. That sounds interesting. Yeah. That sounds really um, interesting. So, yeah, you absolutely got to check it out, man. Um, but, I'm, but that's what fans are hoping for is that it gives us at least a little bit of both his time training um, with the previous holder, which mm. we've only seen we'll, – we'll, you'll see a little bit more of her in Season 3. But we're hoping for more. I got you. So, all right, pumped up for that. Well, we'll have to keep an eye out for that, and we'll, have, we'll look forward to your review of it. Uh, see if it oh, lives yeah. up I, to the expectations. Because, I mean, when, when something like that is like a, a huge demand for the fans, mm-hmm. and then you know when people don't follow through with the the demands, mm-hmm. there's always some upset and hurt people. Now, so again, yeah, I mean, right now we don't know what the movie's going to be about. No, and I know, I know. Some, yeah, I know. I was talking more of metering the the expectations versus what what really happens, the reality. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. Um, I'm really gonna be happy with whatever. Um, there's been a few OVAs out there. I I need to see. Um, the show for the most part has been pretty original so far. Um, the I mean, Izuku, he's gotten. All for one's power, or one for all's power, you know. So he should be the most powerful person on the planet. No, he can't handle the power. He right now he's only able to use eight percent of it. Oh, okay. So he has to be more creative on how he uses it because when he first uses it, he goes to save this girl right from a giant robot. So he leaps and he activates the one for all. He leaps into the air. He shatters his legs. Okay. Then he goes to punch the robot and he blows it away in one blow. Now his entire arm's broken, oh and now he's God. plummeting, and he can't catch himself. Oh my gosh! Great. So, so, super, yeah, so he's, superhero powers with repercussions to your 
yeah. mortal, mortal coil. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Uh, the next thing we've got, and thank God, thank God, we kept it short this this week with the uh, the quiz show that took so long. All right. Uh, Red Red Sonja gets a writer. Uh, and this is the best picture I could find. Uh, I couldn't find a picture of the writer for some reason, uh, but it turns out it's uh, uh, Ashley Edward Miller being tapped to uh, tapped by Millennium Films to create a new draft for the comic book heroine. It's heroine, not heroine or. Ein or Halloween? Halloween. Okay. Halloween. All right. Comic book Halloween. Gotcha. <laughs> it's an exciting opportunity to faithfully adapt the amazing Hyborian world Robert E. Howard created and inject it or inject it with Sonja's knowledge or intelligence, ferocity, and fearless humanity. Miller shared in a statement, "I want people to love Sonja the way I loved her, or love her, and walk out of the theaters understanding why she's so popular and enduring." Sonja is an icon. Uh, Miller is well versed in the comic book world, having written the screenplays for the both the X Men First Class movie, as well as Thor. Uh, he all <laughs> Thor was okay. Uh, he he also wrote the script for Big Trouble in Little China remake. Ugh. The remake. Yeah, I, I was alright so, with the big oh, trouble in Little China. That, no, that's that's, that's I was the same way I, when I when I was scanning <laughs> this article. I was like, I was like, okay, I hate it first class. I hate it first class. Thor's okay. I enjoy that movie. He wrote the script for Big Trouble in Little China. Okay, I'm sorry. This is going to be the best movie. I did, I'm, I completely missed the word remake until you said it. But wait, it's getting better because he delved yeah. into the TV world with Terminator, Sarah Con- the Sarah Connor Chronicles. Okay, which was good. But Fringe. And Black Sails. I never watched Fringe. You should watch Fringe. It's a really you, good I show. think I've got it. Greg. I think I've got it on some bootleg DVDs I got from Afghanistan. Greg, tell them Fringe is probably one of the best TV shows ever, along with Black Sails. You guys you guys, are, you guys are literally playing a pirate game. Go watch Black Sails. I'm sure Aaron will enjoy is it, it too. on? Is it on? Uh... It's Stars, but I think it's on uh, Fringe is a Trap. Fringe is not a trap. It's a great show. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, I think it's a, I think you can get it through Amazon with like a Stars subscription for like five mm-hmm. bucks or something like that. Uh, worth it to just oh, yeah. watch that. Uh, there's also that uh, I think is that is that show on there? Well, here's the thing. Black Sails has been out for a while. I can probably find okay. the first season for like twenty bucks. Counterpart. Uh, this is why I said it's probably worth it to do it on Amazon. Counterpart is a new show that just started this year on mm-hmm. stars starring JK Simmons and JK Simmons. The Evil clones, the pilot should be, uh, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the duality of man and maybe you'll get a picture of it, but it take, take and see if on the stars website that you can watch the, the pilot because it was free for a, the longest time, and I finally had gotten to watch it when I had heard about it. Uh, very good show, an incredible premise, probably along the lines of the uh, the science fiction that is Fringe, but not so far out there that Fringe is. Mm-hmm. Uh, more. Uh, uh, that would is be, it gonna be brilliant. Jay <laughs> Jonah Jameson and Commissioner Gordon. That, and buddy Cop. Could you imagine, like J. Jonah Jameson? <laughs> Mr. Gordon, buddy cop, not even like buddy cop, but like private investigators, maybe. Like, no, but they no, all, because J. Jonah Jameson would just want pictures of Spider Man, and Commissioner Gordon would be like, "Who the hell is Spider Man?" And, and that's what I was. <laughs> that's what I'm going for. It's like J. Jonah Jameson would be like the rogue guy that is like, "Okay, well, we're not cops anymore, so I'm going to play by my own rules." Commissioner Gordon's character would be like, "No, I'm going to play this by the book, no matter what." Also, the Battle of the Mustaches. Between the two, you know, I'm I'm all right with uh, with how how J uh, I almost called him J Jonah Jameson. That's hilarious. Um, how how uh, J K Simmons looks as Commissioner Gordon. I think he looks just fine. I'm just disappointed uh, that he's in the current universe. Yeah, uh, <laughs> talk about wasted talent. Yeah, honestly, uh, hey, he shows up for like five minutes. I always like to tout this, but J.K. Simmons is from Detroit, so uh, so good things do come out of Detroit people. Stanley Cup champions and actors. 
Mm. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, is that all we got on that one? Sonya yeah. first appeared in the 1934 Is it Sonya or Sonja? I've only called it... Wait, what did I say? I thought I said Sonja. You just said Sonja. I got it. Oh, my bad. Sonja first appeared in the 1934 novel The Shadow of the Vulture by Conan the Barbarian creator Howard. In 1973, the character was revived as a comic book hero and emerged in Conan the Barbarian number 23. In 1975, the character got her own comic book, and more recently, Dynamite Comics gave her another series in 2005, which continues to run to this day, so it's doing pretty good. Um, 1985, Bridget Nelson starred in a Red Sonja film, yet the lack of awareness of the character and the underwhelming special effects resulted in the movie being poorly received, especially compared to the Arnold Schwarzenegger starring Conan films. There have been other attempts to revive her, but none too successful. Now, here's the thing with this character. In this day and age, they keep looking for like female her- heroines to be in the big screen, but they're not being creative about it. This is the perfect character. She's strong. She's smart. Um, she's very capable without, but she's got enough flaws and personality there to compensate for it. the The problem is the, the, the characters that were they, that debuted in Howard's stuff were in their own ways flawless. Mm. Like Conan the Barbarian has flaws, obviously, but I mean, like he was the master of everything he wanted to do. I mean, he was a king at one point. Blah 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 blah. But that's just the kind of stories they are. They're great. They're still great stories. Um, and Red Sonja is the same way. So, but there's enough flaws there that you could you have a likable, interesting protagonist, but she's got all the raw power that she deserves. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Um, the only question is, do you think they would keep her in the chainmail bikini? Come on. Why would you change that? It's great. I mean, no, she's more armor it. before, but I, if they make this movie, they have to at least reference it. Not even just because of a s- s- fan service type of thing, but because that's like part of the character, you know, let her wear, like, pl- let her wear pa- plate mail or something. I don't know. Why? Why? No, that would be funny if like. If like like she's uh she's fighting a, a magic user or whatever, right? And she's wearing her her like plate metal armor or or whatever, and he like blasts it off of her, and then she's got that underneath. And he's like, really? She's like, I like to be protected. There's I a, thought it was funny. There's a great there's a great uh, Facebook page that does uh, well. It's a Facebook page for a group that does YouTube videos and stuff, but mm-hmm. one of them is female female fantasy character armor, and. Uh, the girl gets an award for for finishing a quest, and it's basically the chainmail bikini. It's kind of hilarious. <laughs> oh, you talking about the video? Yeah, 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 the video. Yeah, yeah I've, I've seen, there was also somebody made a comic where like the the two characters were there, and the woman was like, "Why don't you wear the armor if you're you know if you keep telling me to wear?" It? And so the guy puts it on. He's like, "Holy crap! I feel so light. I can move because <laughs> he's in the heavy plate armor." Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that so, was good. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the other funny thing. There's a, uh, it's on Funimation. There was a, this RPG parody show. It, they were like just a bunch of shorts. And it was called Bikini Warriors. Uh, yes, it was heavily fan service. But the first episode, the guy, the, the blacksmith kept trying to sell bikini armor, right? And the two of the girls, like the mage and the priest wanted to buy it. But the warrior was like, no, we're not going to do this, you perf. We're going to buy the real armor you've got. He's like, are you sure you want that armor? He's like, this is better. So he forces, she forces uh, her friends to buy. And so they're in this armor and they go into the dungeon and they immediately get one shot in the armor. Like it completely falls apart on him. And he's like, I try to tell you I'm better at making bikini armor for some reason. Oh, and so they put, end up putting that on and it's like completely impervious. Wonderful. It was, it's the most ridiculous thing. <laughs> but I'm. But either way, I'm totally pumped for a Red Sonja movie because she's a cool character. She's, hopefully, they are good with the comic. I mean, Thor. I can understand it's kind of a tricky one to do because it's like magic and modern technology and stuff. Yeah. But it was handled fairly well. I mean, the cliched love story side, which I think movies are or superhero movies are slowly growing out of. Finally, it's okay. They're divorced now, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 She's going on to do um, bigger and better things. Though I do want to see that movie that she was just in. Uh, uh, 
Annihilation or whatever? Yeah, Annihilation. I heard it was all right. I thought uh, it was I on Netflix. The, I heard the payoff sucked. Was it? I'll have to check. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I've heard really mixed reviews by it. Oh, before we finish this, uh, this TV and movie section, uh, one of the other things that I did this week is I binged through all four of the series of uh, Black Mirror. I finished mm-hmm. it. It's all done. I can't wait till they do more. It was amazing. The the final episode, which if the final episode of the of series four is that that's it, that was a fitting mm-hmm. way to wrap up the stories completely. Uh, they're not connected, but they are connected in some way or some form. Oh, can you put me on mute? Yeah, real quick? yeah, I got you. Uh, so so Black Mirror. For those of you that don't know, it's like a technological horror type thing, and throughout most of the uh, hour-long episodes, they have some kind of technology that joins it all together, uh, not specifically stating it, but as you're watching, you start to notice certain things are done the same way, even if it's done because they're all directed usually by different directors. Uh, they have different actors. Yeah, the Star Trek-like episode was really good, but really freaking creepy, too. Uh, that's the thing is, is some of them, some of them are, uh, some of them are really out there in the technological horror, and some of them are just like technological fantasy type things. Like uh, the uh, the dating one, Perry was really good uh, in this fourth series too. That was really neat, and how they ended it out was pretty pretty amazing. I thought that was really neat. Uh, the uh, the first season. Well, first series, because it's a British show, so they call them series. Uh, the first episode of the first series, the the one that starts it out, uh, uh, kind of, I mean, they're supposed to be like a technological horror type thing. They are kind of depressing. Some of them have good endings. Some of them don't. Some just have kind of uh, endings that you don't know what to do with. And actually, the... In the final episode of this past uh, season, uh, there they did three stories that they band together in like an hour and a half or an hour and fifteen minutes or something like that. But the first the first uh, story that they tell in that one was actually written by Penn Jillette. And what's really weird was when I learned that it was written by Penn Jillette, I was like, yeah, that's a no brainer. That's totally him. That is his. That's that's his his idea through and through. Uh, even even down to the descriptions and uh, the way that the the uh, the actor portrayed that part of the story was different than the other two. Uh, he did a really good job to verbally portray Penn Jillette's voice on 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 film like that. Um, they they don't always have good endings. Most of them don't have good endings. The very first episode of the first series was very jarring. And it kind of gave you a baseline for what to expect when you get into it. So when you get to the lighter episodes, uh, they're they're like uplifting. Are you good, Mitch? Uh, they're they're really good. They're uplifting. They 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 give you a better feeling. But there aren't a lot of them. Some of them are vengeance stories. Some of them are uh, decent stories that they're just you know. It seems like there's something something odd going on, something off, but they end up resolving themselves in a, in a, in a positive way. But most of them aren't that great of an ending, but you can't have good endings all the time. And if you haven't watched it, and I don't know, Greg, if you've caught it yet or finished it, um, uh, Philip K. Dick's electric dreams on Amazon prime is really good too. It's really good sci-fi stories. I really enjoyed all of them. Uh, Steve Buscemi's even in one of them. He's, it was great. So, all right, let's uh, let's go ahead and head into the games. All right, and then we can finish this up because we got some pirating on the high seas to do here soon. You need to pick another one for that, so we can change that. <laughs> okay. Um, Final Fantasy music. You no, love Final Fantasy. I hate Final Fantasy. Anyways, anyways. Alright, uh, Battle for Azeroth has finally gotten a release date. Uh, they said honor before September 22nd, and it's about a month and ten days earlier. 
Uh, August fourteenth is when it's going to hit the uh, hit the ground. Why do you running. think they bummed it earlier? Uh, it's Blizzard. That... It's Blizzard yeah. trying to shorten the the development cycles. Finally, they've always talked about doing it in less mm-hmm. than two years. This will put it at what about a month and a half under two years. Mm-hmm. They're moving the the goalposts, and the the thing is, is that the the Warcraft team has gotten so huge. Mm-hmm. That they need to be finishing this stuff a little sooner. Uh, yeah, their content releases have been really good up until they released the last bit right before I stopped playing the last time. We just started mm-hmm. back up and we have a ton of stuff to do, kinda. But we'll see how that goes. Uh, by the time we get to where we need to be, we'll probably have maybe a month or so of just maintenance time before we start into all the pre-events for the expansion. Which is fine. Uh, the last the last month is usually should be like a catch up time. Even if you come back and you try and catch up anyways, you know if you're doing some of this stuff, uh, because all of our hard work will be for nothing in a, in a couple of months. But uh, not for nothing because I'm enjoying the time. But you know what I mean. Uh, we'll have something else to do. Uh, they've they've made uh, a reveal of the collector's edition and all the items on there, which they have a really cool Horden Alliance two faced coin. Uh, that are very, they're very high relief, so it's not like a thin coin, they're actually, uh, what is it called when it's, when it's raised, basically, but it has a raised, uh, relief surface Mm -hmm. on each side, so it looks like when the coin's on one side or the other, it won't actually sit flat on the ground, or on the, on the desk. Uh, it looks really nice, and it's probably, I think, probably about the size of like a, um, like a half dollar or something like that, or maybe bigger. It's it's really nice though, uh, lo- along with you know the usual mouse pad, the art book, which is always nice because, man, the, the those artists at, at Blizzard are amazing. Yeah, I love looking at those books all the time. It's the reason why I've been, even though I've been buying the digital, I've been trying. To, well, my wife's been getting onto eBay and getting copies of the, um, copies of the uh, the art books, or not the art books, but the actual box with all the collector's mm-hmm. edition items. And, and, so, and it, it, oh. it really it really shows off their designs really well and what they were thinking and and a couple of their first drafts of the drawing before they finished it off and put everything else onto it so uh, they, those artists they're well deserved for for their accolades and all that good stuff so I'm always impressed with the art and of course I put the alliance picture up because they're the better of the two <laughs> uh, but uh, that that's all that I got on that. It, there, there hasn't been too much new development. Uh, they really haven't announced if there's any other allied races that you're going to be able to play as. Kind of hoping that the the fox race in the desert gets added as a playable race because they look neat. And I would love to have a rogue that uh, that looks like a fox. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool. Um, I can name I'm... it Sly Cooper. She's a fox, right? <laughs> I'm sure that's... <laughs> no, he wasn't. You can name him Miles. What? Miles? Why? Sly Cooper was a uh, freaking... Or was he a weasel? Go ahead and Google that for me. Sly. Yeah, I'm doing it. What's uh, that? Oh. What kind of weasel does that look like? It looks like a that fox. Guy. He looks, looks like, like a fox. A, a, he's a striped fox, yes, with ring, a ring-tailed and the bandit Oh, mask anthropomorphic and... raccoon garbage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. All right, uh, so so that's all I got for that. Do you uh, you want to take this last one here? Uh, yeah. So Spyro reignited trailer and screenshots have been released. I don't know if you saw that little trailer, but it looks really good. Um, I'm sure your wife's excited. She is, and that's the reason I included this was because she's been talking about it almost nonstop. It's been this and Sea of Thieves the entire week. Is she nerd screaming um, upstairs? Uh, she's probably going to be going doing that little yay because the baby's trying to sleep. <laughs> Great. Um, but it, it but for it does look really good. Like the fire effects look f- like fleshed out, and real. Um, they've they've kept like the personality amazingly well, and it unlike most remasters that I've seen, this one feels like it's been rebuilt from the ground up as opposed to like a new coat of paint put on it. Right, right. Um, and I think that's going to make it more stand out more as opposed to. Some of the others that are like, okay, well, now we can bump up the graphics a little bit. Oh, it's done. 
You know, 15, 15 minutes of work done. Yeah. Um, and I really hope that they not just do like a remaster, but they expand on it a little bit, you know, make the worlds a little bit bigger, flesh them out a little bit more. Um, I I wouldn't hold my breath on that. I, I, heard, know, it's co- I, I heard it's coming to every system. It's just going to be, what, a PlayStation 4 exclusive for a short time? And yeah, I think but it's coming for Xbox hit. One, yeah. I think Switch, maybe. Yeah, it's going to come on the Switch, too. Um, but I don't know. I just think, I think, like, games, unlike, unlike some mediums, I don't enjoy reboots of movies and stuff, but I feel like games, those are something that we should kind of rebuild because up oh, hold on one second. Yeah, because those are those are easier to reboot because it's a little more acceptable. You can jump in there and uh and take in and maybe even change the voice actor, but you're not really changing too much of the art. Sorry, uh Opu's got a phone call. He's on call for work, so uh anyways, uh if you if you take a if you take a character for a video game and you, you change their voice, I mean it's been done multiple times with like uh uh, Splinter Cell's gone through a voice change, which it was originally done by uh, Michael Ironsides, who played Jester and uh, Top Gun and stuff like that. Um, I'm trying to think of a couple of other ones. I mean, even even stuff in the the Warcraft universe, those characters have gone through some char- uh, character voice changes. Uh, you see it a lot in anime too, when actors change. Uh, you saw it recently with more recently with uh, who was it? Harry Shearer. I think was the one that was leave was trying to leave or left the Simpsons, uh, but they just changed his voice. I think he did uh, uh, what? Uh, Let's see. He did. I'm trying to remember if he did Mr. Burns or Smithers' voice. Was it Harry Shearer that was trying to leave the Simpsons? Right. Oh no, yes, he did. No, he so. tried to leave, but he decided to continue. Once they bumped up that once paycheck, they bumped probably. up that paycheck, yeah. Uh, but it, it's kind of easier to do, especially nowadays with the voice acting. It's not really a big deal to have a voice actor change. Uh, but for the most part, the art usually stays pretty close to the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, even even Link goes through some changes, but fundamentally, he's still the same same looking character. They just make yeah, his tights I, a little longer or shorter depending on how tall he is. <laughs> there's, I forget what the term is. There's some kind. Of, I think there's some kind of term with this. But you're right that to for character design, if you're say, if you want like a visual shorthand to say this is the same character as before, or you're playing in the same series, not it's more, goes more. It goes beyond just art style. You have to keep certain things like okay, well, you know, what's a visual shorthand for Link? Okay, well, a tunic, blonde hair. Sword left hand, that kind of stuff. Silly hat. Not always. Breath of the Wild didn't have it, remember? And even the hair, because he's he had pink hair in Link to the Past. But you know, there's certain oh, yeah, short hair things. And I and I know that Jeremy's going to say something about this, but JoJo's bridges are no. Nope. Okay, for here, let me let, nope. let's find that. There's that mute button again. Oh, it's so much better when you can't hear anything about JoJo's bizarre adventure. All right, I took it off. Go ahead. Uh, so, for for example, for part one, transition into part two, he made sure that the JoJo's were more or less physically identical with certain exceptions. They just had the same build, the same facial structure, the the, ha- the hair was different, and the personality, the poses that were taken, that kind of things were different. But it was a visual shorthand for the reader. Oh, so this is a continuation of the story. Those kind of things. So, you have to... You know, I say it all the time. You have to keep the spirit of the character. You can yeah. do certain changes, but like Spyro is known for being purple. If you all, all of a sudden made him a red or green dragon, that's starting to decay what Spyro is as a character. Yes, it's just one different color, but it's the start. Oh well, you know we're going to start making Spyro walk on two legs. Oh well, you know we're going to give him a new type of jump attack or something. You know, or, or whatever. He's going to use a machine gun. Okay, well that's a different character now you know, at this point <laughs> yeah exactly uh but th- but they try to they try to keep that that way that way that that makes it to where cartoons any kind of animation video games they're a lot easier to change uh <laughs> i one of the other big ones that i forgot was going from david Hayter to Kiefer sutherland for the voice of uh uh well big boss for 
snake for better for lack of better terms for each of them. Mm. But yeah, uh, that that change there was you know it it wasn't as jarring as people thought it was. Uh, even though David no, Hayter's got a really great voice for that character and all that good stuff, I, but I understand from a story perspective too. Once that once you realize that, oh well, yeah, it would have given everything away if he had they kept the same voice act. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. So another one, um, if we're talking about voice acting, um, remember Cor- Courage to Kill the Dog? The original voice actor for Houston, Eustace oh, passed yeah. away. Yeah. So when they brought in the new voice actor, they took old voice clips like that. What? Huh? And stuff that he would do, mm-hmm. those little catchphrases, and they would mix it in with the new guy. To so it kind it, of helped. Yeah, yeah exactly. It kind of built that bridge that you needed for the two. Uh, right. The same thing. And they, they did it, and it doesn't... It doesn't hurt it a lot when they do it in live action movies. And one of the examples, even though everybody hates two and three, uh, the Matrix two and three had two different actors as the Oracle because the Oracle passed away. The actress that played the mm-hmm. Oracle in one and two passed away, and they replaced her in three. Uh, and they it, did do a justification for that in in the canon. She changed yeah, her appearance. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. She changed her appearance because the, she has the ability to alter the code that she needs to to survive. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, they did give that reason, uh, and, but she was still in, you know, in person, mm-hmm. still the same person kind of thing, mm-hmm. uh, which is a neat way to deal with that. Uh, it's a lot harder when you have things like, uh, uh, when you have 17 different actors play Batman, especially when four of them do it over the next eight years. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, it's kind of rough, you know, and then, you know, we're, we're about to experience that again, I think, but... Uh, we'll yeah, see that's that. a, that's going to be a whole other thing. But all right, well let's uh, let's wrap this up so we can uh, get things done so we can get onto the high seas. I'm excited for that. Yes. It's been a long it's a long been a long two weeks. I don't get to play with you guys often, so uh, just every two weeks. But uh, we'll go ahead and we'll be doing that uh, within an hour after the show. We'll see. Uh, but eventually we will be back on here uh, streaming uh, Sea of Thieves. We're gonna try and uh, make tons of gold and. And buy sails and embellishments for our ships so it looks neat. While we and try not to drown. And try not to drown and try and take all comers. <laughs> That's a terrible I'm not, phrase. I'm not miss it. That is a yeah. terrible phrase. All right. Uh, thanks, everyone, for stopping in and listening. For those of you that came into the live chat and, and spent some time with us and joined in, maybe we'll figure something out as we continue on with these, uh, these quiz shows because Perry tried to give away answers. He also spelled Ireland wrong as well. Yeah. Um, but I'll I won't point that out at all. Well, uh, didn't you you misspelled quiz? It has two Z's, doesn't it? No, it only has one Z. Are you sure? Quiz is no. There's only one Z. Even in quizzes, sure? there's no. There's only one Z. Anyways, uh, the, those of you listening at home on the download appreciate your uh, patronage and stopping by and and if you could uh, uh, leave us feedback on our show wherever you get our show from whether it be iTunes Google Play uh, Music Store or whatever it's called and any other place you can get it from you can find us on it doesn't have two Z's Uh, go to dictionary.com anyways it 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 also it also shows up on uh, uh, what's what's that thing called Uh, tune in radio uh, you can get the app on the on the the stores for free, and and we're in there if you search for us there. Uh, but uh, don't forget to check out our Patreon page, patreoncom slash Uh You can donate if you feel compelled to, especially if you enjoy the show. We'd greatly appreciate it, and it would help us uh, push the show a little further and try and get uh, headway into things like reviewing games and buy more Mitch some more Gundams and other things that he can build and usually do okay and add to his model collection and, and, and uh, break. uh there's a there's a goal in there on the patreon that eventually at some point uh once we've got enough to start doing these things that we can start giving some of those things away uh as part of a giveaway even though mitch will cry every time we try and part with one of those pretty much yes. uh, <laughs> go ahead okay uh you cannot contact us at ecg underscore podcast on twitter or at our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash ECG podcast, or our email address at ECG podcast at gmail.com. Also, don't 
visit our webpage, www.stasisgeek.com. That's S-E-A-S-I-S-G-E-K.com. I think I spelled that right. Or don't post a comment on our video. We will not read it. Maybe. I'll try reverse psychology on them. It's not working. It's, it's totally not, working. It's, Look at them. It's not working. All right. Uh, we will be back next week. And uh, we'll be back on here doing Sea of Thieves in a little bit. Uh, but we'll be back next week. Uh, until then, stay geeky.